the common complaint that we see in chiropractic medicine, um, physical therapy is that nobody took time to actually listen and hear what they had to say. Just jump to a jump to a conclusion immediately without gathering data. Without listening. I it's a disservice to that person in front of you if you don't tell them all of the things that are going mm -hmm. on, if you don't address those. Because again, mm -hmm. like we can come back to informed consent. Like I would want to know if there's a fire going on inside me. Why? Yeah. Like I just saw you. Why wouldn't you tell me that? Mm -hmm. I actually cheer on those docs that want to do suboptimal care. Because it makes our foundation seem simple to us, but seem complex to our patients. And typically you go into the pediatrician and it's written off of, nope, they seem fine. But mm -hmm. you know in your gut something is wrong with your child. Yep. That's not okay. That's not even part of our standard of care that that's, we're taught in school. That's care given to what you think that person wants to hear mm -hmm. versus what that person actually needs. Right. And let's... Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Prime Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Skip, inside Legacy Life Media Studios with the amazing, wonderful, my wife, Dr. Julie Weiss. It's so nice to have you here. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing really good, too. So, Dr. Julie, I just finished up taking care of another amazing healthcare provider here in Green Bay, and we were going through an exam. And she has had previous care. She has had previous chiropractic care. She has had previous... MD care. She has, oh, she's had OB care. She has a baby. And at the end of the exam, I always ask our patients, is that what you expected? Every time, every time. Yeah. And I rarely, if ever, get back of, well, yeah, it was okay. Usually their mind is completely blown. They're blown away. They're blown away. And what I find ironic is that I don't feel like I'm setting out to blow them away. I am setting out to take care of a patient and collect as much data and health history as I possibly can to give them the best care possible. Clinical findings. Clinical findings, right? So today I want to talk about being clinically efficient and ethical for our patients because from a consumer standpoint, a lot of the times we don't know what to expect when we go into a chiropractor's office or a medical doctor's office or a dental office, like you don't know what to expect. You can be extremely anxious. You can be very, very worried. And there really isn't a across the board standard of care. No, there's not. Even though there's, there should be. There's not a, a checklist of, okay, I'm going in today. I can expect this A through mm -hmm. A through F. And then if this is happening, then I can expect this next cascade of things to happen. And mm -hmm. I just actually, I, I had the same exact phone call with someone last night. And I think as we go through this today, I think it's just really important for everybody to realize that we all just need to stop and we need to ask questions. Yeah. Because so many times we go into something and it can be a whirlwind. It's okay to say, hold on a second, let me catch up, or mm -hmm. can I write this down? Can I take some notes? But ultimately, ask questions. Well, ask questions, but I'm looking at it more from the patient side, like you talked about. Ask questions, make sure things are explained. But from the doctor's side of thing, we have an ethical duty to explain things to our patients on what we're finding. That's called true informed consent. And a lot of times, informed consent doesn't happen. And it blows me away because when I have a patient, case in point like this mom, where she was blown away by the data we had, and she works with autistic children, like she's a therapist, and she thanked me for being so thorough. And in the back of my mind, yeah, to say you chuckle, that's just kind of giving a tongue-in-cheek thing to say, wow, I'm really disappointed that I just, in my mind, collected basic information on you, and you thought that that was way above and beyond you've ever had before for scope of care in your life. Well, we can consider it basic because yeah. this is our bottom line. Well, that's this the is, foundation this is of what, what we, we do. do. This is yeah. the foundation. Mm -hmm. However, when nobody else is doing it, yeah. that's a problem. And that's where the concern is. And that's what I mean out there, guys, is like 
those of you that are listening, by the way, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share this stuff, because what we're getting into today is about standards of care. And being standardized is the floor, the basement of what we do is collecting as much neurological communication and testing as possible. I want to see how that brain's fully communicating, fully functioning, and where is it communicating the best and where is it not? Where is it maybe over communicating? Where is it under communicating? And why is this causing the issues or the malfunction that's going on in the body? It's not just to come in, hey, how are you doing? Handshake touch your back, feel some muscles, talk to you all about muscle tightness, which is so out of the scope of what chiropractors do in the essence of we work on neurology, we work in brain-body communication. Just talking about muscles waters down everything that we do. That's for physical therapists to talk to you about. We do something that's a little bit more in-depth with working with the nervous system directly. So Dr. Julie, when we're talking standards of care, where do you think that that foundation, where should that line be drawn? Because there is a line to be drawn. Like, this is the standard. The standard's the standard. Well, I think that's, we haven't struggled with it, but it's of, we know what our foundation is. Mm -hmm. And that's what well, it separates makes it us. super difficult when we make recommendations mm -hmm. based off of all of the clinical information and the testing and the skins, all of the information that we've gathered mm -hmm. and we make recommendations based off of that. Yep. Right. And just like in anything that we do, it's always, okay, let me get a second opinion. Let me get a third opinion. Mm -hmm. Right. But when we've set the bar on what clinical foundation, what clinical standards should be, if we set that bar up here and it doesn't matter where, where else we go and somebody else their bar is way down here for the bare minimum, they aren't getting the same clinical information, the same clinical findings to give a relevant recommendation that is ultimately going to help or to serve that person. Yeah, and I actually cheer on those docs that want to do suboptimal care because it makes our foundation seem simple to us but seem complex to our patients. And I find it it's very, very easy to impress somebody with basics when just the basics aren't being done. You know, when we when we jump into a chiropractic exam, a neurologically focused chiropractic exam, neurologically focused testing, it's all about the neurology and how the brain's communicating to the body and the body's communicating back to the brain. And when a patient comes in or a potential mom or anything and we start breaking this stuff down and get away from just the, how are you feeling? Does your back hurt? Are you having some pregnancy pains, aches and pains, things like that? But actually getting into how the body functions, that's what should be going on. And I think as a public out there listening, this is what you're dying to have happen is somebody actually diving into your health history, sitting down, understanding what's going on with you. But even more importantly, then diving in and doing the right tests to know exactly what has to happen. I think this is where so many people, right, like, if you're dealing with something, or let's just give an example of a, a child is sick, mm -hmm. right? You live with that child every day, all day long. Yep. Right? And so you know what the child sounds like if they're not, you know, their usual behavior. And typically you go into the pediatrician and it's written off of, nope, they seem fine. But mm -hmm. you know in your gut something is wrong with your child. Yep. So with the foundation that we have, sometimes we become nervous in saying the things out loud of what we've been suffering with, what we've been dealing with, right? Because we don't want to be told it's in your head or that's not true. Mm -hmm. What is really cool with what we get to do with all of our testing and our clinicals and our findings, we're not, we are allowing the body to tell us, the neurology to tell us what exactly is going wrong what's malfunctioning, what's not happening within the body, mm -hmm. which then most times justifies exactly what that person is feeling. Mm -hmm. But that is based off of the clinical findings and the clinical testing that we do. When somebody is just very baseline, they're not getting those true things. And then that's why the comment back is, well, I don't, I don't agree with that. Or, you know, it must be just something in your head. Well, I think the other side of it is too is is the other component that is just as important as those testing is getting an incredibly good background history on what's going on with with the mom and dad that come in or the child. 
from birth history to pregnancy history to what they've been like in youth or if they're an adult, what happened throughout their childhood. Do they remember what their birth was like? Obviously, they're not going to, but if their mom explained it to them. But having being able to actually collect data and being able to collect as much information as possible so we can then find it. The common complaint that we see in chiropractic, medicine, um, physical therapy is that nobody took time to actually listen and hear what they had to say or just jump to a jump to a conclusion immediately without gathering data without listening i can't tell you how many times just from a very very thorough health history and what's going on with that patient from them talking to me i know what i'm going to find and what i'm not going to find during that exam i know what i'm going to probably end up seeing on their x-rays if we take them I know what's going to happen when we do our neurological insight scans and check HRV and heart rate variability and stress and how their body's been compensating to gravity their whole life. Like I know what we're going to find, but it's still the standard of care is missing in medicine as well. To sit there and talk to a patient and say, okay, my MD, how often, do you, how long did you see your doctor today? Three minutes. Three minutes, really? Maybe five, but they never looked at me. They just asked me what was going on and wrote me on a prescription. Well, many times these assessments, like the, the questions that are asked, mm -hmm. are textbook questions. But we don't live in a textbook mm -hmm. society of the things that are wrong with us that mm -hmm. we can look it up. So that's the, the misalignment in the questions that are asked aren't actually getting to the root cause of what's going on with that person. Versus with our line of, of questioning, the things that we are asking, we're pulling out these different things based off of, well, what was what did this answer bring? Okay, now let me build off of that. Yeah. Let me get more information. Well, that's the it's basics of the exam level. too. Exactly. Is these are all baseline things that then go off into the next steps. And to constantly getting, getting it told, thank you for being so thorough. And in my mind, I'm like, thorough? Like I was just scraping the surface. Thorough is when some of these tests come up positive that they shouldn't be showing up positive or we're seeing all these weaknesses or we're seeing all these malfiring of nerves where we're causing hypersensation or we feel too much or we feel too little. Then we start going down this area and what absolutely destroys me is inside our profession itself is the lack of examining skills that should be there from newborn on up. And chiropractors that listen to this, if you're upset with that, good call me. Let's have a discussion because if I can help you and give you just a few extra steps and pointers to make you clinically excellent and brilliant versus just like the other guy down the street that shook their hand, shot an x-ray and cracked their back. Shot like, an x-ray. <laughs> if that, if they didn't, you, sometimes they don't even do that. There's no due diligence. So then we're going and we're moving the spine and not knowing what those bones even look like. That's not okay. That's not even part of our standard of care that that's, we're taught that's in school. Care given to what you think that person wants to hear mm -hmm. versus what that person actually needs. Right. And let's so let's go down this one too. This was amazing. So we went through this exam process with our son the other day mm -hmm. for his mouth. We need to get some mouth work done with him. Soft tissue work, some tooth work done. And the dentist that he met was incredible. I've never met somebody that's had that type of knowledge behind facial musculature, nerves that are going to the face, how that's working, what the teeth are doing. And she kind of knew I was a chiropractor, but I don't think she knew the knowledge that I actually have or the knowledge that you have as well, but was able to go in, articulate, but then get across the importance of what's going on with our son and not just worry about the two cavities he has. Right. If we would have gone in saying we only want a cleaning. Yep. Cleaning right? would have been done. Like any other dentist. Sure. Just the cleaning. Well, did you want us to assess into these other things? Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know that was an option. Right. right. I didn't know that there was a need to do that. It's a disservice to that person in front of you if you don't tell them all of the things that are going mm -hmm. on, if you don't address those. Because again, mm -hmm. like we can come back to informed consent. Like, I would want to know if there's a fire going on inside me. Why? Yeah. Like, I just saw you. Why wouldn't you tell me that? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, you said you only wanted this. Yep. Or how did that doc find cavities and you didn't? Mm -hmm. How did this doc go and say, okay, you have this going on with your mouth. You have this going on with your teeth. And it's the same thing with, with chiropractic and spinal hygiene as well. It's the same exact thing where we start investigating and uncovering a lot of things that weren't on the surface 
So just because they're not on the surface doesn't mean there's tons of stuff going on below ground. Or not filled out on paperwork. Or not right? filled out on paperwork we, all the time. Have we started, you know, with with an adult, mm -hmm. right? And not everything gets filled out. Like so, namely, like if we have. Um, if we have bladder issues, mm -hmm. if there's sexual dysfunction, or oh, yeah. if we have hemorrhoids, right? Yep. Like those are those things. Like, gosh, I can't yep. put that. Well, why would why Heavy would they? Menses, extreme bloating. Why, why would why would my chiropractor mm -hmm. want to know about those things? But once these people are under care, that's the first thing that gets whispered of like, oh my gosh, my husband said this, or did you know that I had here. these and now yeah. they're gone? Mm -hmm. Well, so again, paperwork is there to start to uncover these things. But yep. if we're not forthcoming with that knowledge, yep. or if somebody's never asked those questions for you to realize, oh, I shouldn't be having that problem, or right. that's not normal, mm -hmm. then that's well, your, where things just continue. Your doctor should understand that communication. They should understand mm -hmm. that thoroughness. They should understand why it's incredibly important to take a health history, why it's incredibly important to do a thorough exam, to do the to do the neurology tests that need to be done. And from a medical side, running the right toxicology screens, running the right blood tests, not just doing sending off They're and trying minimal. to get a stool test done and it comes back and tells me how fat my crap was. Like that's literally it. Did it float? I could have told we you if it floated or sunk. Toilet. You know, like <laughs> Did we check the microbiome? Did we actually look for different bacteria? Did we see parasites? Like these are things that are detrimental to our health that are never uncovered. And then what gets me is that the patient, you guys out there, you wonderful people will say, I don't get why this wasn't checked before. Is there not a standard? And there's well, not. There, there, there may be a standard, but again, it's where in whatever profession you want to talk about, mm -hmm. it's become, instead of me telling you what you need, it's, well, how much cash do you have? Yeah. What is your insurance cover? Can you cover this? And that's usually that's, the first question on the phone to us That's more or less what too. it comes to. And then yeah. that automatically sets the substandard type of care. Absolutely. The first questions we get a lot on our calls when we talk to our patients is, man, is does insurance cover this? Well, does it, whether you have insurance cover or not mean that you're healthy? Like that's the hard thing. And a lot of the times the insurance game covers acute, acute injury care. It doesn't cover chronic issues. It doesn't cover things that are actually designed to keep you healthy. Insurances are to like keep you out of the hospital, keep you from dying. Keep it's you from not, dying. It's not to keep you moving along the road. There's no money in Well, that. your home insurance doesn't cover window replacement when your windows go bad. Right. So that's, it's the Unless main, a same tree thing, flies through them. Same thing with our car, right? Yep. We don't, we don't, you know, make an, an auto claim for every time that we need to rotate the tires or, or an change oil change. the oil. Right. But we are expecting those types of benefits with our health insurance. And it doesn't work like that. But the other side of that is, is that if we take that and understand that our insurance doesn't cover those things, that we should be making very positive gains in our health, which will in turn reduce the amount of money you need to pay for your insurance because you're not chronically sick. You're not always getting hurt. Your body is recovering and healing like it's supposed to. There are gains to that in saving you money on the back end of a lot of things. But that thoroughness, that true informed consent needs to happen. I'm going to tell you this right now. Good quality care starts with getting to know who you are as a person, doing a thorough health history, what's going on, and diving into both the past, present, and future, understanding your sleep, knowing your recovery. Then, after all of that is said and done, getting together, doing an exam, a thorough exam, doing the tests that need to be run, whether it's blood, whether it's neuro, whether it's urine analysis, whatever that is running the advanced imaging that needs to be done as well, and then figuring out the care plan that needs to be done across the board, whether it's dental, medical, chiropractic, physical therapy. How many of you have actually sat down with your doctor, physical therapist, whoever it is, and actually got a care plan wrote in front of you? Actually, no, unless you've been to an orthodontist, you haven't had that done. It's just, they just had me come back Tuesday. And then it's Thursday. You know, but say if, why? If you're ever in one of these appointments mm -hmm. and like for for whatever reason that you're there and you are left thinking, oh, well, aren't you going to do this? Mm -hmm. Or how come you didn't do that? That should be the immediate first 
red flag. Mm -hmm. I don't get offended when people, when our patients ask us that mm -hmm. ever. I want to make sure that I'm doing my due diligence as a doctor for you. But then when you leave, you feel heard, you feel like you were seen and that we actually cared. And that develops the trust and the bond that you deserve as a patient to know that the person taking care of you cares for you as much as they care of the, for their family, the people that are in front of them, and their most loved possessions, we which are their children. We can't care for their, you their more than you care for yourself. No, and we can't, and that's, that's hard. It's it's a very difficult place. Oh my difficult, good. difficult. It's a very difficult Tuffical. and tough place to be able to like to navigate. That's a new word. Difficult. I like it. Um. But it just it puts us in a really difficult space because like when we make recommendations, I always think of, well, what would we want for our children? What yeah. would I want for you if you were in this position? Like how how do I want to be taken care of? Mm -hmm. And so that is what how everything comes across of our recommendations. Well, I would want everything as far as what I got to experience with that past dental visit. And sometimes that's mm -hmm. difficult for somebody who doesn't who's never experienced. Yep you know, true informed consent, what a, what a true exam actually looks like. Mm -hmm. And we understand and we know that that can be overwhelming. And then that's where it's okay to say, um, hold up, we're moving too quick, or mm -hmm. I have questions, well, why are we doing this, right? So we can have those questions answered and we can go through the process together. Or coming in and wanting the quick fix. Mm -hmm. I want the quick pop. I used to see a chiropractor. I know my back needs to be get, get click, pop, snap, whatever acronym you want to use or, or saying about whatever you want done. But true chiropractic doesn't work like that. They're, but that's for us to uncover, to figure to uncover. out why that you think that that's all you need. Yeah, and it's up to us to tell you no. Mm -hmm. Because listen, right now you've heard me say this, but anybody ever telling you no, has it ever caused you harm? Very rarely when somebody tells you no, it doesn't actually cause you harm. It might not make you real happy, but if I'm the chiropractor and you want that click pop and I tell you, no, I cannot help you, you can't get mad at me for telling you no because I'm trying to protect you. It's a disservice. It's a disservice to you. And it's also a disservice to not tell you the truth. It's 100% true. And the truth is, is we want our community here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, our community in Wisconsin, the community of the United States and the world to be healthier. But we also need a standard passed across the board where just the foundational things shouldn't blow you away as a patient, which tells me that substandard of care, sub -standard of care is profession. getting passed along in every profession and we can't stand for it anymore. And this is where it stops. We just had storms come through. I almost feel like there should be like red tape underneath like this podcast, like the PSA, like oh, we can public make, service I can announcement. Probably like, make listen, that happen, right? <laughs> the ticker. But it's it's serious, and like we, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sounds like the 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 tone and the mood totally just changed. Mm -hmm. But that's the seriousness mm -hmm. of this because time and time again, it's unfortunately some people just show up after they've been through so many things. Yeah. They show up to us, and it's. Why didn't I know about this? Wish sooner? I would have known. And we've talked about this before mm -hmm. in previous podcasts mm -hmm. is I wish I would have known. Well, listen to the people that actually refer you to come in to see these doctors like us that do very thorough ethical work. And sometimes that ethical work costs money. And sometimes and, it's tough to hear. And those sometimes it's tough to hear those mm -hmm. recommendations. But you know what? We love it when we get recommendations from people all over whether it's recommendations for us to see certain providers because we trust the people that tell us or people recommending people to come see us and the patients to come see us. Dr. Julie, do you have anything else you want to add? I do not. Smash that like button below. Give us a thumbs up. In fact, if you could do us all a favor, go on over to Google, I mean iTunes or, or wherever you're listening to us and leave us a review. Giving us those thumbs up seriously do help us. Subscribing to us, asking people to come in and subscribe really does help. Leave us a five-star review because that's the only way we can continue to serve and get our word out to everybody. So I'm Dr. Skip. This is the amazing Dr. Julie Weiss, my beautiful wife. And you guys go out there, get it done. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.